Hey, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna talk about five AI tools for marketing that actually work. So let's just get into it. So the first tool we're gonna talk about is the one that's gonna take UGC creators out of business. You may think I'm exaggerating, but let me give an example. For one of my SaaS tools, I have an Instagram channel where I would, you know, post videos once in a while about the product demo. So before, like, you know, I was either doing videos myself or actually hired a UGC creator where we would just film like, you know, the first frame with the hook, you know, if I'm doing some random thing with a caption on top, and then we will like stitch the product demo. For example, for my SaaS product, it's brilliant. I just have the hook and then have like a demo on the screen that I could just stitch together. So I'm scrolling here on my Instagram channel. You could see like the views were 800, 200 or something. If I scroll here, I have my, you know, my, my friend here creating content where like she's sort of like doing that initial frame. And then we're getting into the product demo. You know, I was like doing some stuff myself as well where like I was in the frame first and then we were getting into the product demo. So after I started using the UGC creator, look at the views I'm getting. So the first video I did, almost 50K views, and this was posted about a week ago. This one of the recent videos I did, 240K views. My channel followers went from like 300 to like almost 3000. And this is an AI generated UGC creator sort of thing where I have them as like, you know, the face of the content, face of the brand for the first few seconds. And then we just jump into the product demo. So let me show you the tool I use for this. So I use something called Real Form. So if you look at the pricing, it's not free. So the starter plan is like $19 per month US and you get about like 10 videos per month. I'm just going to show you how it works so you can see for yourself if there's something worth investing for you or not for your business, depending on what you do and what your marketing is. All right, so I'm just going to go to here product. I'm just going to give you a quick little a glimpse of how this all works. So here we have options to like create a UGC avatar, like, you know, create avatar generation, or we can like, you know, create a meme video sort of thing as well. So again, based on your content strategy, there's like a couple options uh, what you can do here. There's one thing you can do here is you can do your custom sort of avatar generation. For example, like, you know, a girl sitting in a car wearing a blue sweater so if you do that it's going to create that avatar for you and then you can animate it so i'm just going to skip over that step i'm just going to show you how to create a ugc video of some of the avatars i have already created pretty straightforward actually i think the person building this has kind of seen the pattern of how most of the people were using ugc content where you have a hook and then you have like a sort of a demo and then you have a call to action kind of thing so they have basically baked the entire template into this product so here i can pick like you know one of these avatars some of them were like pre-built and some of these avatars are built by my team so here let's say we have this this guy I can just like talk about you know I can just use my hook here and I can position it if I want it to be the bottom top or middle and then I just stitch my product demo so I just put the demo here and then I can pick my music here so let's say if I just pick this one I'm gonna change the hook POV you just found the best chat GPT prompts hack so cool I just did this and then I have my hook here I have my avatar and I have my product demo I think this is probably fine I have my sound and I'm just gonna hit create so as you can see like I have a bunch of like videos here that's generated and here's my video that's ready to go so here you know we have this avatar so just a casual little AI guy which you can probably can't tell is AI because it looks so realistic and then we just have a product demo stitched so here instead of scheduling because I don't have my scheduling enabled on this tool because I also like to post on Instagram which is where we saw our things you know uh, our videos getting super viral so I'm just gonna go to Metricool here I'm gonna log into my account and what I will do here is I will go into planning and I will there's nothing that we were posted something today but it's fine I'll just create a new post what I'm gonna do here is now I'm just gonna add my video and I'm gonna upload the file here just found the best chat GPT prompts hack chat GPT I'm just gonna put hashtags chat GPT um ChatGPT prompts they are tools just this has got to be a hashtag and then i go here to my presets now uh, for my TikTok, uh allow comments oh, actually not a commercial uh who can post this is what i wanted to change public perfect uh this is this and uh can't publish past the due date so let me just say put like 22 and or i can just be like publish now boom that's it. My UGC creator is AI and then I just posted the video in like 30 seconds. That's how quick it is. All right, moving on. So you know like how easy it is to create content, how easy it is to build apps, and like everything is getting easier. So how do you build a sustainable business? My firm belief is that to build a sustainable business, you need to really understand your users. The better you understand your users, the more you know what they need, what they want, and the better product or services you will be able to deliver. How do you understand your customers better? You need to talk to them. But talking to them is hard. One, you don't know how to talk to them. You know, it's user research is a skill. Two, even if you talk to them, if, even if you have the skill, 
How are you gonna get them to jump on a call with you to talk to you? That requires a lot of commitment. We have done in the past for our own apps where we want to interview users, but what ends up happening is that they schedule calls two weeks in advance. And two weeks later, they probably have something else come up and they're not gonna show up. If you have ever worked in UX research, in product, or your startup founder, you know how hard is it to get people on the call and to get them to give your feedback. So introducing this platform called Loopletic. So basically it puts your customer research on autopilot. Let's say if I wanted to get feedback from people, I can go into Google Forms, I can create a form, but then I need to know what the questions are. And then every question is gonna be different for people. So I just create a new loop, which is basically like a survey. And I just say like, hey, you know, user experience survey, and I'm just gonna pick Digital Samaritan, which is, you know, the workspace I created, which kind of knows about what this platform is. I'm gonna hit continue. And now I'm just gonna say, what is my research intent? I want to understand how can my website be more useful to my audience. Uh, it didn't really pick up automatically, but I think usually it should pick up automatically uh, where, what is the context? So like my website is a list of top tools, top AI yeah, tools and learning and AI learning hub. And it can sort of define what is the maximum number of questions I wanna have this AI interview agent. Well, it's not technically an agent, but we can call it that to sort of like go through. And then I'm just gonna continue here and I'm just gonna launch it. So I'll show you like how this sort of works. So you would expect, you know, any normal survey to have like a list of static questions, but this is a bit more dynamic. So let's say, you know, I just type one of my random emails here. Let's just kind of go through it. Hello, we're interested in learning about your experience with our website featuring top AI tools. Could you share what you currently find most useful on this site? I'm just gonna say some random things like your curated list of AI, AI tools. Now, when we go to the next question, this is where the kicker is. Instead of just going through like a template of questions that we do in a type form or a Google form, this is trying to like mimic a user interview, like what a user researcher would do based on a response that's gonna think intelligently what question to ask to really dig deeper into what user insights might be. Nice. For example, our follow-up question here is like, thank you for sharing that you will find our curated list of AI yeah, tools most useful. Could you tell me what additional features or information you'd like to see on the site? Again, you know, it's, it's kind of like digging in deeper. So let's just say I want to see more tutorials. Normally, if you're just doing a survey, you're gonna get this, but you're not, you don't really know what mm -hmm. sort of tutorials that you want to see. Like, you know, I get more tutorials, sure, but it doesn't tell me like, what, what should I do with that information? So let's see if the next question actually like digs deeper or just kind of moves on to something else. I'm curious. Uh, thank you for sharing that you like to see more tutorials. Could you share what type of tutorials you would find most helpful? For example, are you looking for beginner guides, advanced tips, or interactive examples? Beginner guides for complex tools and use cases. And now it's gonna take that into the context and it's gonna bring up the next question. Thank you for clarifying. Could you share what specific challenges you face when getting started with complex tools? See, now it's like really digging deeper into what users are trying to say without us getting on a call with them uh, or like, you know, doing a static form, which is gonna like not give us as great of insights as we would need. So that's Loopletic. By the way, for transparency, I wanna mention that Loopletic is something my team and I just built because we struggled with this problem and we thought other founders and marketers also struggle with this. So we decided to build this platform. So I just wanted to put it out there for full transparency, but if you have any feedback, try it, use it, let me know. We really wanna make this product super useful for people who struggle with like really understanding what users really want. Like I said before, I firmly believe that understanding your users is gonna be the moat to build business because that's the only thing that AI doesn't know and no one else can replicate it. That's gonna be very critical to you and your business. All right, let's move on to the next tool. So, stock photos. So traditionally, you would go to Pexels or other like, you know, stock photo tools and you would just search for what sort of photo you want. But sometimes what you're really looking for is not there. You just have to sort of make compromise. Then came along AI image generation tools, for example, Midjourney, where then you can type what you want and then it's just gonna generate that for you. But that means you have to know what you want and you have to make AI understand what you want. I mean, I don't know about you, but most of us are not art directors. We can't really like put our thoughts into those words that AI is gonna understand. So let me introduce you to this tool called Visual Electric that's gonna make that problem disappear. So if you go to Visual Electric, it's basically like Pexels, but all these images are AI generated. So it's like a stock photo sort of library, but all these images are generated completely by AI. Like they look incredible. If two years ago you tell me these images are AI generated, I would be like laughing at your face but here we are. Okay. So the beauty about this is like, let's say you want a stock photo, you search for it, you find something you like. Maybe let's say we do this one, right? 
but this is not exactly what you want. You want something similar. So what you can do here is you can like go to the art director feature and you can just sort of type what changes you want to make to this. So basically it's like stock photos, but you can edit it like, you know, those AI image generation tools. Basically you have like some templates you can build off of. For example, let's say, you know, make the background with the theme of Blade Runner. I don't know how well it's going to work. I don't know if it understands what Blade Runner is or like how they're training their AI. I'll probably have to look more into their prompting guide probably, but let's just see, you know, a simple sort of like simple prompt, what changes we can make to that photo. Okay. Okay. We see like the same sort of actor or creator or avatar and then we have a similar sort of clothing and everything and now it's like in the scene of like cyberpunk it's like cyberpunky so it's very like blade runner type let me go back if we can go back to the same image see if we can do like a side by side comparison here to see how well it worked okay cool now let's just do a little side by side here okay so we pretty much have like similar style i mean the, the, the way they're standing is a bit different now but we can see there's like quite similarities between our original photo that was like stock ai and then we have the one with the changes we made so the point is if you are you know like you're not an art director you want some photos for for your marketing assets for your website for social media you can try visual electric you can sort of like look at the examples of the aesthetics or the styles or the scenes you want and you can make changes by being the art director on this platform speaking of photos um let's say you are working in e-commerce you know you have a product maybe a lifestyle product fashion product and you got to do a photo shoot traditionally most of the photo shoots are expensive you got to hire a model you got to hire a professional photographer show into studio space or own all that equipment but let me show you a tool that's pretty much the best i've seen so far to make it all happen using ai so if we go to this tool called flare ai you can like do photography for like the fashion stuff we can go into the products here like you know there's speakers there's like tesla optimus robot there's like headsets sunglasses so like again it works for like a variety of products but i've already trained one so let me just show you how it works so what i did was like i took this photo of like three different photos of this article from ralph lauren and all i had to do was like train this model so you can do like high quality start training that's all you got to do once you do that you have like you know that product as like a variable that's sort of trained now so all I have to do now is like just type my prompt, which is like a photo of a woman wearing this product, 8K warm soft lighting studio, fashion forward, street style backdrop by artist Steven Miesel, Miesel and Mario Testino, sang English shot. So this was like, you know, I did this a few weeks ago, probably I just, I use this prompt, like I use like a style of this prompt for like a mid journey. So that way I can just sort of copy the prompting style here. But now these are the photos of that model generated using that product. We can see like different prompts I've used here for all those different photographies. But these like basically like we were able to use AI to do product photography without those expensive equipments or photo shoots. All right, moving on. So the next product we're going to talk about is Prompt Genie, which is what you probably, I don't know if you noticed that earlier, but the Instagram channel I was talking about is Prompt Genie. So we've been getting great feedback about Prompt Genie. So basically Prompt Genie is a prompt optimizer tool. Like you don't have to pay for half the AI tools that are out there because you can just replicate the same within ChatGPT or Claude with a better prompt. Prompt Genie was specifically built for people who don't really know how to write prompts or they just need an assistance on writing, crafting better prompts. Of course, you know, if you're a prompt genius already, you don't really need prompt genie, but I'm gonna share for the people who will still find it useful because thousands of people use it and they do find it useful. So if we go to promptgenie.com, which by the way has a free plan, so you get like seven bonus prompts to start off with, and then you can generate one free prompt every day. You just pay a $7 a month, but it's like a price of a coffee, but it will make your life so much easier. I'm gonna show you how. Basically, like I said, you can like replace a lot of paid tools by just using a better prompt, but writing a better prompt is a bit of a skill. It's not just like, cool like you know hey chat gpt can you like write a better prompt so we've been building this tool for past two years so where we have spent time looking at all the prompt engineering theory and the principles and like training the model to be able to craft these super useful prompts and the best way to use this prompts is to like take the prompt build your prompts library or like if you're building custom gpts for example your content writing things you know linkedin repurposing uh, your social media your branding work like whatever you may want to do with chat gpt i would say try using prompt genie generate those core instructions and maybe build custom GPTs for things that you use mostly or for just one of things, you can just use the prompt. It's, it's pretty simple actually. So let's say I just wanna use AI to turn a blog post based on transcript I had on a call. So what would I do? Either I would just go to chat GPT and be like, hey, can you turn this transcript into a blog? The results I will get are probably gonna be a bit more generic because the prompt isn't optimized. Or what I can do is I can just use prompt genie. I'll be like, hey, uh, I want a prompt for a blog post based on transcript provided and when i generate the prompt let me show you like 
the kind of prompt it generates. So you'll have an idea if there's something that you want to use or not. Okay, cool. Now here's your prompt. Your task is to create a blog post based on the transcript provided. Here are the steps to follow. First, carefully read through the entire transcript. So here where we would have insert a transcript as a variable. And now the prompt says, after reading a transcript, you will write a blog post summarizing and discussing the key points and insights from the transcript. The blog post should be engaging, well-structured, written in a style suitable for general audience. Here are some guidelines for writing the blog post. Begin with an attention grabbing introduction that provides context and hooks the readers in trust. That hooks the readers in trust. Summarize the main topic or purpose of the transcript in one to two paragraphs. Identify and expand on three to four most important points, ideas, or insights from the transcript. Dedicate one to two paragraphs to each point, explaining it clearly and providing relevant examples or quotes or quotes from the transcript. Like see how like the level of detail in the prompt here. Conclude with the concise wrap up that reinforces the main takeaways and leaves the reader with something to think about. Write in a clear conversational tone aimed add a general audience, avoid overly technical language unless necessary, structure the post logically with sections, paragraphs, and transition sentences to guide the reader. Feel free to express your own opinions or reactions to the content as long as you substantiate them. When you're ready, write the full blog post inside sort of like this sort of tags. So you can, you know, if you want to use this in your automations or your GPTs and all that stuff, it gives all that structure. I, do, I can talk about this for a long time, but if this is useful to you, if you think this, this prompt was actually better than what you have written yourself, try it. A lot of people also use this just to kind of get a starting point for their prompt and they can customize things as needed because it's kind of like an autocomplete where instead of like doing all this writing yourself, thinking about all these ideas, what you might need in the prompt, you have a starting point. Anyway, I'll stop talking here. Five tools for marketing that actually works. As always, if you like the video, give a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel to learn more about AI tools and use cases you can integrate in your work. If you're a professional and want to learn more AI, you can subscribe to my newsletter. It's free. Anyway, I hope this was useful. I hope to see you in the next one. Peace.